Good day and welcome to Building on the Rock. I am Pastor Chris Turner, the pastor of Rock Tabernacle Church of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And today we're going to get into the Word of God and share something I believe will be a great blessing to you. Before we do, I want to invite you out to our podcast. Our podcast is called Building on the Rock with Pastor E. Chris Turner. And if you go out there, you can find a bunch of teachings that we put there that we believe will be a great blessing to you as well. But today we're going to share about a word. Just one word the Lord dropped into my spirit. I was meditating the word of God. And the Lord dropped the word in my heart. And I, and I know over the, over the years of studying the word of God and walking with the Lord, that when the Lord deals with me by just dropping a word in my heart, if it's a word from the Bible, I will do a word study on that word. I'll go through the Bible and find out different places where that word was used. And the Lord eventually shows me something from that word study. Or, but the, today, the word is the word upgrade. Upgrade. And that word itself is not found in the Bible, but that's the word the Lord dropped in my heart to share with you. It's the word upgrade. And uh, so we're going to do that right now. That word upgrade, you've heard that word before. It's uh, by definition, it means to improve upon something. It means to exchange something for greater or better. It means to give someone a promotion. It means to uh, it means something that enhances the quality or performance of something else. It means to move to the next or higher category. Amen. That word upgrade, upgrade. God's got an upgrade on His mind. It means to improve on something. He wants to improve on something. He wants to ex exchange something for greater or better. It means to give someone a promotion. He wants to promote someone today. It means something that enhances the quality or performance of something else to move to the next or higher level or category, amen? For example, if you have a computer, you know what upgrades are. Your software might be uh, in need of an upgrade. You might, your computer, you might have had it for a while and it's, and it's operating slowly and right now you might need a computer, a software upgrade. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna have to get that done so that it can work better for you. It can. Uh, it can process information quicker and be better for you. I mean, that's what an upgrade. If you have a cell phone, you know what cell phone upgrades are. You might have a cell phone that it was fine for a while. It was, it was the newest model when you first bought it, but it, it's been around for a while and something might go wrong with it. You might be acting up. And you take your cell phone in to get it fixed or take it, to get it looked at. And the man says, well, you're, you're, you're due for an upgrade or you're eligible for an upgrade. And so you'll get a new cell phone. You don't, you don't get the old one fixed, but you'll get a new cell phone. Amen? That's an upgrade. That means, once again, it means to improve upon something, to exchange something for greater or better, to give someone a promotion, something that enhances the quality or performance of something else, to move to the next or higher category. You know, one time me and my wife were, uh, we had rented a vehicle, and we went to a city, and we needed to rent a vehicle to get around in that city, and so we had had a, just a small compact car uh, reserved at this company, uh, rental company. And when we got there, all the cars were gone. They had rented the car that we uh, had reserved for ourselves. And so uh, they said, this is what we're going to do. We have a nicer car, another car. It's, it's a better car. It's a, a bigger, but it's a better, more uh, luxurious car. And we're going to give it to you at the same price. So you're going to get an upgrade, a free upgrade uh, from our company uh, on the on the rental car, so we got the nicer rental car. Rental car, we drove it around and and we used it. Amen. So once again, that's that's an upgrade. Amen. But the Lord, once again, the Lord dropped that word in my heart for you and for me. So apparently, God's got upgrade on His mind for you. He wants to upgrade you. He wants to bring you to a higher level. He wants to promote you, give you something better. Glory to God. If God's got that on His mind, then we should. Get in tune with them and get it on our minds as well because the Lord's thinking it's time for an upgrade. Just like the, the people at the store, the Apple store, if you have an iPhone or Apple phone, they might say you're eligible for an upgrade. The Spirit of God is saying to many of his children, you're eligible for an upgrade. You're eligible and you are due for an upgrade. Something better is coming to you. Something higher, a higher quality. An exchange is about to take place in your life. Now, what I'm about to do in this teaching about upgrades is I, I call this prophetic teaching. 
This is prophetic teaching. I'm not just teaching a, a little message from the Word of God. This is more on the lines of prophecy. And, uh, and I'm not a prophet. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pastor teacher. However, I do deliver prophetic utterances as the Holy Ghost wills and as he gives them to me. And this is one of the times I'm going to be able to do that. But you have to understand when, when prophetic utterance comes to you, when someone speaks a prophecy to your life or over your life or to you, it requires something on your part. Amen. When, when, when someone prophesies or speaks a prophetic utterance over your life, it requires something of you. It's not just something that automatically takes place and automatically happens because it was spoken forth. It may be true and it may be from the Spirit of God that it was spoken. However, without your cooperation, it doesn't always manifest. Many times, it, most times it won't manifest without your cooperation. It requires something on your part. And I'll prove that to you from the Word of God. Uh, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, and I'm, in, I'm going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. And um, the, the Apostle Paul, the elder apostle, was speaking to a younger pastor named Timothy, and then he was encouraging him in this first, uh, uh, this first book of 1 Timothy. And uh, verse 18, chapter 1, verse 18, he says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. He called him his son, spiritual son. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. You hear what Paul told Timothy? He said, I'm encouraging you, young son Timothy, by the prophecies. I'm reminding you of the prophecies. Paul apparently had prophesied previously over Timothy's life. At some point when they were present together, some prophetic utterance came forth over uh, from Paul uh, uh, regarding Timothy to Timothy. And Paul is reminding Timothy of those prophecies. And he says, I want to remind you about those prophecies that by them, he says here, you might war a good warfare. What do you mean warfare? Now you have to war, you have to war for those prophecies. You have to war the, uh, the good warfare for the fulfillment of those prophecies. Apparently they were prophetic utterances that were good uh, for Timothy, that were to uh, enhance or, or bless him in some way. That were, to, that, that, were reveal, that were to reveal something that God wanted to do for him or through him in his life and ministry. And Paul had given those prophecies, but Paul told Timothy, now you have to war a warfare by those prophecies that were given to you. Well, I thought that if it was God that prophesied it and spoke it over my life, was it going to happen regardless of what? Well, it, once again, it requires your agreement. It requires, many times you have to war for them. Now, the warfare, we, we are the war for the prophecies, are, are not with people. We don't fight with people for their fulfillment. It's not about fighting with people. It's not really fighting this devil either. The devil, he's our enemy, he's a foe, but he's a defeated foe. Jesus has already defeated him, and we don't have to fight the devil. He's already been defeated. But we do fight, Paul said elsewhere, the, the fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. That's what our fight is. And he was charging Timothy that there are certain prophecies that were spoken over you. He said, by them, you wore a good warfare. Look at verse 18. That, that went on before thee, by, by them, by my war, a good warfare. Verse 19 says, holding faith and a good conscience. So that's how you war for the prophecies that are spoken of your life. You hold faith. You hold on to them in faith. Glory to God. So, what I'm about to share with you today, we're talking about upgrade. The Spirit of God has upgrade for you on His mind. He's saying, you're due, you're eligible, it's time for an upgrade for you. This is prophetic teaching, amen? But, but now, your part is to take it by faith. Agree with it. Say amen to it. Amen means so be it. You say so be it, amen. And you take it by faith and you, you hold on to it until it's fulfilled, amen? Hold on to it in faith until you see its fulfillment, until you see the upgrade that the Lord has for you. So the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you that many of his children are eligible and qualify and are due for an upgrade. This upgrade will, will manifest and elevate the quality of their life, amen? Could you use an upgrade in that area? Just the quality of your life, amen? It could be in the area of your health, 
if you've been attacked with a, a sickness and disease and you've been struggling with a sickness and disease in your body for some time, guess what, God? The Spirit of God is saying upgrade. It's time for an upgrade. That means in your health, your health will be upgraded. Your physical health will be upgraded to, to soundness again. Glory to God. It might manifest for some people in the area of their job or vocation. The Spirit of God might be saying to you, it's time for an upgrade. You're eligible. You're due for an upgrade. That means a better position, a better job, or, or a different job, uh, doing something that, that the Lord's put on your heart to do at this time in your life. It might be in the area of your finances. You might be financially, you might not be where you want to be or where you need to be in life. But the Spirit of God is saying many of God's children have been faithful and they're finding they've been faithful in little. You've been faithful to honor God with that which is little. And the Lord says, that has not gone unnoticed. Amen? And the Lord says, and you're due for an upgrade. You're due for, for upgrade financially that will bring you to a higher financial level, that will bring you to a better place financially where you can um, do more, do more for the kingdom of God, do more for your family, do more for yourself. Amen? Pretty Spirit God saying upgrade. So I'm saying Amen, Lord, so be it. That's what I do in faith, because I'm speaking prophetically to you. The Spirit of God's saying that the word for today is upgrade, so I'm going to say, yes, Lord, if that's what you have on your mind, sir, and if you say I'm eligible, I receive that spirit of upgrade or the, the anointing for upgrade in my life. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, well, one other area where the Lord might be, uh, you might be eligible for an upgrade. I mean, you might be a minister. And, you know, uh, there are different levels of anointing, different levels of ministry anointing, you know. And, and when you start out, you might be at a certain level and you might minister and show yourself faithful in a certain area. But the, at some point, the Lord will give you a greater anointing and a greater influence to be a greater blessing to his people and make a greater impact for the gospel. That's also an, an area where the Spirit of God might be saying, upgrade is coming to you. Amen. But however he chooses, however he wills, and whatever he has in his mind, you might have a, a thought in your mind of how, what areas you need. The Spirit of God is saying, now is the time. Now is the due time, the due season, the right time, and you are eligible for your upgrade, says the Spirit of God. And once again, you need to get in faith uh, with that and receive that by faith. Amen. Now, just because I that word dropped in my heart, and I gave you that definition of, a, of upgrade. We're talking about upgrade today. Uh, I still need to go to the Word of God, the Bible, and find out a scripture. And I, that's why I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, what scripture is that in? We're, you're talking about upgrade. I know you, you're a God of, of elevation and promotion and a God who wants us to have better. You're always trying to bring us up to a higher place in every area of our life that's good. But, Lord, I need some scripture to... to to, to back up what you're talking about today, if you want me to speak this prophetic teaching about upgrade, what's the scripture? And this is the scripture the Lord dropped in my heart to share with you. And it's from the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43. And I'll read verse 19. In the Spirit of God here, even though the word is not used specifically, the word upgrade doesn't appear in this, in this verse I'm about to read to you, but... The idea, the topic, it's talking about upgrade. It's talking about elevation. It's talking about you coming up to a better, you receiving better, coming up, uh, having more, being promoted into some good things that God has for you. This is what he's talking about in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. Very familiar scripture to us. It reads like this. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's Isaiah speaking, prophetically speaking to Israel, but also by the law of double reference. He's speaking unto you and unto me, the church. He's speaking unto us individually as well. Amen. God says, behold, I will do a new thing. Amen. Now it shall spring forth. That new thing sounds like an upgrade to me because the new thing that God's speaking for them is, is, is talking about their restoration. It's talking about something good happening in their lives. So it sounds like God's going to bring them up. It sounds like an upgrade to me. He says, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. I'm going to take some, some of those words out of that, out of that uh, chapter right there, out of that verse right there, and we'll break them down to you, and it will help you. We're talking about upgrade today, and that's what the Spirit of God is saying. Your upgrade is due. You're due for an upgrade. It may be in your health. Maybe in your finances, maybe in your family, maybe in your marriage. Amen. Bless, bless God. You, you, you have some issues in, in your family. When the Lord said it's upgrade time, you have a better marriage, a stronger family uh, unit, relationships. Glory to God. Whatever area, that's what the Spirit of God is saying to us. So that's what we're going to lay hold on. That's what we're going to take by faith and receive. Lord, I receive my upgrade even right now. In the name of Jesus, and I thank you for it. That's, by, that's how you release your faith for it, amen? But look at verse 19 again. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. That word new right there means fresh. It means not existing before. It means introduced recently, now for the first time. Different from the one that existed. Hear that? God said, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to upgrade you. I'm going to give you something fresh, something that didn't exist before, something that's just introduced recently, now for the first time, something that's different from what you had before, from what existed before. Glory to God. That sounds like upgrade to me. I love that. God says, you had the old, you've experienced the old, like you went to the store once again the, the, with, your, with your old iPhone, your old cell phone, and they said, no, there's something new out there. There's something fresh. There's something uh, better available and uh, something that just recently came out. Amen? Bless God. And you're about to get it. Amen? That's what the Spirit of God is saying to you in whatever area he's bringing you up. I feel the Spirit of God right now on me right now as I speak this prophetic word. And I hope that you're receiving it. Receive it by faith. Amen? Say amen to it. And let God do what he wants to do in your life, which is good. Amen? So that word new, it means fresh, not existing before, introduced recently, now for the first time, different from that which was existed from that which already existed. He said, I will do a new thing. He says, now it shall spring forth. That phrase, spring forth, is a phrase I want to define you. That phrase, spring forth, it means to ascend or to shoot forth. It means to move or to cause to move suddenly, upward and forward. Hear that? Shoot forth, spring forth. It, it, notice he didn't say, he didn't say, now it shall come forth. He didn't say that. He could have, but he didn't. He didn't say, now it shall come forth. This new thing is about to come forth. No, he said, now it shall spring forth. It shall spring forth. That word spring forth, and once again, that phrase spring forth, it means to ascend or to shoot forth. It means to move or to cause to move suddenly upward. Or forward. God said this upgrade that I'm about to bring in your life, this upgrade the Spirit of God is saying that I'm bringing into many of my children's lives, people who have been faithful. You've served me. You've done the, the small thing. Now it's time for the bigger thing, the greater thing. You've done the lesser. Now it's time for the greater. You've had the old. Now it's time for the new. God said when that new comes, it's going to spring forth suddenly. It's not going to just come gradually and just ease its way in. He said, no, it's going to spring forth. He said, now it shall spring forth. It shall ascend and shoot forth. It shall cause to move suddenly upward and suddenly forward. Amen. Glory to God. I like that word suddenly sticks out to me. Suddenly. Once again, he said, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And it, it implies something that's going to about, something about, something's about to happen suddenly. That's good for you. Amen? Those of you who are due, those of you who are eligible, that's the Spirit of God speaking to you. And that word suddenly, it means happening quickly and unexpectedly with little or no warning. Hear that? That's how the Spirit of God moves many times. It happening quickly, unexpectedly, with little or no warning, it means marked by abruptness. Abruptly. Suddenly, quickly. I mean, without warning, it just happened. Bless God. God said, that's how you're upgrade. That's how you're blessing. That's how your breakthrough many times happens. It's just is about to happen for you. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. Prepare for your upgrade. 
Know that it's in the works. Know that it's about to happen. And when it does happen, and once again, it's not going to come slow. It's not going to just move and creep in your life. It's going to spring. One, one minute it wasn't there, and the next minute it was there. One minute you have, you were struggling with symptoms of disease and sickness, and the next minute you're completely whole. One minute you, you were at this job, it seemed like it was a dead-end job, it was going nowhere, no place. But the next moment, that's gone, uh, all of a sudden you're, prom you're promoted into a better place. One minute your your uh, your your family is in a certain situation, your kids are are, are doing this way, your relationship is doing this way, in your family. But but in the next minute, suddenly, suddenly things have changed. Things break for you. Things uh, 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 something comes your way. Something good comes your way. Amen. A good break comes your way. Suddenly, glory to God. God says that's how your upgrade is coming. He said upgrade. Glory to God. Amen. But He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will make a way even in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen? Amen. And it will happen suddenly. That's how your, that's how your upgrade will take place. Lord God. Now, now, when I say suddenly, the Lord just wanted me to let you know that when he says suddenly, I'm going to do something suddenly. Something suddenly good. Amen? For you. It, it's suddenly for you. Suddenly for you is not suddenly for God. Nothing happens suddenly for the Lord, but it happens suddenly for you. I mean, on your part, it manifests suddenly. On your part, your breakthrough comes through just unexpectedly. Oh, oh it's just there. It wasn't there, but now it's here. Amen? Amen? I just went out. I'm, I'm, I'm in a better place all of a sudden. It happens suddenly for you, but the Spirit of God said, there are no suddenlies for me. See, because every blessing and every breakthrough the Lord brings in your life is something that he's already prepared for you. He's already had ready for you. He's already made ready for you. And it's been in the works for a long, long time. You know, right now, even right now as I'm speaking, things are working. The Lord works many times. Most of the times, most of his work is done behind the scenes. We're in, the, in the realm, in the areas where you can't see. Things are being arranged. Movement is taking place. Amen? Amen. Blessings. Blessings are being lined up. Promotions are being lined up. Amen? Uh, 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 encounters, people that you'll meet, and, and different things and situations are being, are being lined up behind the scenes. So, and this thing, these things happen for a long time, but then when, but when, it finally, when the final thing does move forward and upward, it, it comes across as suddenly for us. But once again, in the spirit realm, in the realm where the, where the Lord moves and works and operates, it's not suddenly. It's been in the works for a long time. Some good things have been lined up and lining up for you. In fact, in fact, the book of uh, First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine says that, says that even before the foundation of the world, he said, "I has not seen." He says, First Corinthians two nine says, "I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those that love Him." And one translation says it this way. Yet I hasn't seen nor ear heard, now there's any of their hearts, thing, uh, uh, the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared. That word prepared means to be to made, made ready and kept ready. God said there are some things that I have made ready and kept ready for you that your eye hasn't seen, your ears heard, but, I, but before the foundation of the world, I made it ready for you and kept it ready for you and to be introduced into your life to come forth into your life at the right time, at the right season, and the due season for its appearing in your life, and you've been faithful, and it's, uh, it's upgrade, and it's coming to you, bless God, right now. Amen? He's made it ready for you, and he's kept it ready for you. Some good things. And the Lord says, right now, it's about to spring forth. And come forth suddenly, and not suddenly for me, he says, but suddenly for you, and it's going to be bring you to that upgrade that you are eligible for, says the Spirit of God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, one, one thing, uh, my wife especially, she works a lot more with computers than I do, but, uh, but you know, I, I notice when her computer many times is... You know, she'll have a computer, and she does a lot of work on computer, but, but it, it'll, be, it'll be ready for, it'll be due for an upgrade, or, or she'll need a new one, a newer model, or some new software. One of the things that, that happens when, when you know it's kind of, I can tell it's kind of time, is that she'll begin to get frustrated because the computer will be operating slowly, 
and she'll get frustrated and she'll be saying, oh man, this thing is operating so slow. Oh, what's wrong with this thing? Or it'll be going on a glitch. Why is it glitching so much? Why is it taking so long? Why is it, well, it's, it's due for an upgrade. It's due for an upgrade. But that, but that causes her frustration in life. That causes her to be frustrated when she's working on the computer, when it's not operating as quickly as she's used to or as efficiently as, as she's used to it operating. And that causes her frustration, amen? And it's just let you know that she's due for an upgrade, amen? And you know, that's what the Spirit of God let, wants to let me know. That some of you have been, you've experienced frustration in life. You know, uh, all frustration that you experience is not from the devil. Now, there is the devil's frustration. He wants to make you frustrated with your life, frustrated with your situation, your finances, where you are in life, what you're doing in life, and not happy with where you are. And there is that frustration that Satan can bring in your life. But there's what also that what, what we call a, a holy frustration sometimes. Sometimes it's that frustration not from the devil, but it's actually from God. There's a holy frustration where the Spirit of God is saying, it's time for you to move to a upper, to a higher level in some things. It's time for you to move upward and forward in some area. You've been at this one stage long enough. There's a higher level for you. And so now that frustration that you're feeling at this level is not the devil, but it's actually God saying, it's, it's, I'm about to upgrade you. If you let me, I'm going to bring you up. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to bring you forward. Glory to God. So I mean, might be what some of you are, are feeling right now. And if you have felt that in the last several weeks, months, or even last couple few years, and, and maybe the Lord has, has positioned you, prepared you, for your upgrade and it but it's a, it's about right now but it's here now because the bible here says the spirit of god saying i will do a new thing and now it shall spring forth it shall spring forth and once again your response is what to say bless god amen so be it i take it by faith i receive it amen you lay hold of that by faith and and you take it by faith, according to that prophetic word that the Spirit of God is saying. And he's saying upgrade, amen? So you might feel frustration. But also, an, another area, another, another way you know that you're about due for upgrade in some area of your life is, and I've noticed this, this is also biblical. This is more important than it's biblical. But also, in my own experience, my own life, I know this from experience, the fact that, that the devil fights your hardest. I believe the devil preserves his greatest fight. For that moment when he anticipates you're about to be blessed. He anticipates that your blessing is about to break forth. Your promotion, your blessing, your breakthrough, your elevation, your, your upgrade is about to happen when the devil anticipates that. And he can anticipate some things. I, I don't believe he knows the future like, like God knows the future. I mean, the, our, our Lord is, is omniscient. He knows everything and about everything and about. But Satan, even though he doesn't know the future, he can he he has dealt he's he has enough spiritual knowledge about the things of God, and he's observed man for thousands of years, and he can anticipate when 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 a faithful man or a faithful woman is about to see God promote them and about to see God bless them elevate them do something good that's going to upgrade their life in some way they're about to experience that breakthrough that they've been standing for in faith for a long time he anticipates he knows when it's about to happen many times he can anticipate it and when he does he'll launch his greatest attack at you at that moment why to get you to try to, that's his last ditch effort to get you to give up, to get you to throw down your faith, to get you to give up and walk away on it and to abort what the Lord has been trying to bring into your life by way of good, by way of blessing. Amen. That's why many times you're, you're, you're experiencing warfare and warfare in different areas and amen on different fronts. You're fighting warfare in your finances, but then something happens in your family, but then something's happening also at your job, and something happens at, in, in, in your mind, and you know different kids ain't acting right, and all these things happening at once. Many times what's behind that is, once again, that's it's Satan's last ditch effort. It's his attack to try to abort. He's trying to attack you at the point of a breakthrough to get you at that last minute to give up. Don't fall for that. We should know, you should know better than that, amen? Dr. Mike Murdoch said, warfare always surrounds the birth of a miracle. Hear that? 
Dr. Mike Murdoch said, warfare, always, satanic, spiritual warfare we're talking about, always, always surrounds the birth of a miracle. When the Lord's about to bring, give birth to something miraculous in your life, or in your ministry, in your, in your finances, in your, in your, in your career, and your, however it is, when he's about to give birth, when you're about to give birth to it, warfare will be there. Satanic warfare will always be there that you have to overcome. And bless God, if I had time, I'd show you that. But that's just, I'm just letting let you know that the frustration you've experienced and the attacks that you've experienced, don't think that that's just coincidental. It's not coincidental. It's letting me know, it's letting you know that bless God, what the Spirit of God is saying to us is right on time. This is time. We're at the time when God says, you're about to come, you're about to be upgraded. What does that word upgrade mean? It means you're about to be improved upon. You're about to, I'm about to exchange something uh, that you have for something better. Amen? Upgrade means I'm about to give you a promotion. Upgrade means something that the enemy, that something that enhances the quality of performance of something else. You, you, your life is about to be enhanced the go better, amen? It means to move to the next or higher category. Glory to God, amen? Upgrade is happening for you right now. Now, what I want to do just in closing, because I close, is, is to, I'm closing, but I want to give you just a few, just three, I'll give you three uh, ways that you can make sure that you're positioned. This is, we're back here in the scripture in Isaiah chapter 43, where I, 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 I want to know what do I do to position myself for this upgrade, to make sure I'm in the right position to receive what he's saying? When Isaiah said, behold, I would do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. That's the upgrade. Now it shall spring forth. Well, what do I need to do to make sure I'm in the right position to receive that? Number one is, is right here. Now we always start reading in verse 19 where it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. But I'm going to back up one verse to verse 18. And we're talking about how do you position yourself? Verse 18 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Then verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. God said, I'm about to do the new thing. I'm about to do the upgrade, but I need you to do something first. Verse 18, I need you to remember not the former things. Amen? Remember not the former things. That means you need to put out of your mind, you need to forget about some things of the past. You can't experience this upgrade at the level and or at the in, in the way that the Lord wants you to experience if you're still messing with all the old hurts and the old wrongs and the old pains of the past and the old things that didn't work out and, and messing with that. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to, he likes to bring negative, painful hurts and situations in your life to get you to keep focused on that in the past of how bad the past was. And, and what you, when you do that, you forfeit the future. You forfeit the new thing that God wants to do for you. He said to them, he said to Israel, behold, I will do a new thing. But before I do that new thing, I need you to do something. I need you to remember not the former things. Let that stuff go. Let the people go that hurt you, that did you wrong. Let the bad stuff go. The situations that didn't work out. You don't know why. You don't know. You don't understand. Let it go. Let it go. Amen. Let it go. Don't hold on to stuff, stuff, negative stuff, even mistakes that you've made or things that were done. Don't hold on to that stuff. Let that stuff. Remember not the former things. Amen? Amen? Even uh, areas where you were limited before. You're not limited no more. God said when you're upgraded, when this upgrade comes to you, you won't experience those limitations. Those limitations, that things that kept you back before aren't going to keep you back anymore. You're going, you're going up. You're going up. You're going up into something, something better, something better, fresh, never seen before in your life, never experienced before by you. I'm not going to give you something old again, God, the old negative stuff, amen? But remember not the former things. To position yourself for your upgrade, you're going to have to do some forgetting, amen? Let some stuff go. Don't fall for the devil's oldest trick. He loves to keep you focused 
on your past. He loves it when you are past possessed instead of future focused. God wants you to be focused on the future, on the new thing, on the new thing that's about to spring forth, break forth suddenly in your life. That good thing, that elevation, that promotion. The devil wants you past possessed. He wants you to focus all in on what they did to you. But you don't know how much it hurt me. You don't know how much. And I'm not minimizing your pain. I'm not trying to make fun of you of your pain. But I'm saying you got to, if you want that new thing, if you want God to do a new thing, you have a choice to make now. You have a choice to make. You can't have the new if you're hold on to the old. And God says here, remember not the former things. They're passed away. Amen. That's the former bad things we focus on a lot of times. But also, I, I want to talk to you also just real quick about the former good things, too. I mean, the former good things, the, 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 the good past. Even things that, that, you know, you ever hear people talk about the good old days? You ever, you, ever, you ever talk about the good old days? Oh, yeah, back in the good old days. We used to do this back in the good old days. We used to have it this. Well, I wish we go back to the good old days sometimes. I don't want the good old days. The good old days weren't, weren't, weren't good. I mean, they, some areas, some ways, they might have been, you know, but no, no, no. I'm not talking about the good old days. You know what the Bible says about the good old days? I'm going to give you one scripture that the Bible says about the good old days. This will stop you. I used to say that about the good old days. Oh, I wish I lived in the good old days. My mom, my, my dad grew up in the good old days. I wish I lived in the good old days. I'm looking in the book of Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to show you what, what Solomon said about the good old days. And he says, Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Hear that? He said, don't say that the, that the, that the, that the former days were better. We're talking about how to position yourself. God's saying, I'm, I'm ready for Ella. I'm ready for up." Upgrade you. I want to upgrade you. It's time for something good to break forth in your life, to spring forth suddenly in your life, to bring you to a higher position, a higher level. But you can't have the old. But but if you're looking at the old, thinking that the old was what you want, the good old days is what you're longing for. Psalms that is wise. That Ecclesiastes seven ten in the Message translation says, "Do not say why were the old days better than these." Hear that? You've done that, so have I. So do not say. He says, but do not say so. The Bible says, do not say something. I'm not going to say it, so I don't ever say it anymore. I, he said, do not say, why were the old days better than these? This is not wise. Once again, because when you look at the old days and, and say that the, the old days were better, the old days were good. The old days were no, no, no. When you look at the old days, you're limiting what God can do in your life, even right now. I'd never say that the old days were behind me. I, the, the old days were a, a, a former. The old days, the, the, the good days are, were former. The good days for me, the good old days. You know, what, you know what my good old days are? My good old days are today. These are my good old days today. Someone say, "Well, it's in, your good old days are before you." No, my good old days are right here, right now. These are the good old days. For me. And then guess what? Tomorrow, that's my good old day. And a year from now, that, that, that's my best days. My best days are now. My best days are at hand. What God is doing in my life is, is right now he's concerned about. Not about what the good old days were. Well, give me that old time religion. That old time, that song that he used to sing in the church. That old time religion is good enough for me. I don't want old time religion. I want the fresh thing that God's going to do. I want, I want what God did in the book of Acts. We want to go back to the book of Acts. I don't want the book of Acts. Thank God for the book of Acts, though. I want Azusa Street. You know, Azusa Street, the Spirit of God was poured out, and then, and then, and then God did great things and miracles in Azusa Street back in the 1907s. No, I don't want Azusa Street. I want the thing that God is going to do new. God said, I want to do something new today. I got something new. He's not thinking about the old days, saying those were the good old days. God's saying that that's not wise, Solomon says. What's wise is when you say, he said, remember not the former things. I'm looking for what God wants to do today. God said, I got some new wine. I've saved the new wine and the best wine to last. And that's where he is right now in the spirit of God in the church. 
It's not going to, what God's doing in the church today is not going to be like what it was in the book of Acts. It's going to be better. It's not going to be like what it was in Azusa Street. It'll be better. Because these are the good old days. Glory to God. These are the days of God bringing the best he has. Amen. In your life, in my life, in the church. And so we're going to do what we're going to obey the word of God. We're not going to look back and say that though, that the good old days, that the old days were better. No, that's not why Solomon says we're going to let God do something new, something fresh in our lives today. I'm going to forget the negative past. I'm going to forget the negative hurts, but I'm also going to put behind me the good things that God did. Thank, I'm going to thank God for them, though. Thank God for what you did and the, the, the good things you did in my life. But, but, oh, but I know you've gotten better. You've gotten better. Amen? Regardless of what, how blessed you are, the Lord says, I've still got more for you. <laughs> I, know, I know you're blessed. You're, you might be blessed financially, but the Lord says, I, I got something better. I still got an upgrade for you. You might have your needs met and have enough to have, believe, but God said you, you, you can still use more to be a greater blessing. Amen. I still got more for you. You might have a strong marriage today, but the Lord said your marriage can still be upgraded. Even though it's already strong, I can still make it even stronger. Amen. You might have a good job, a good vocation, but I can even do, do some, bless you on there, bless you there still, and bring you bring an upgrade to you in that area. Regardless of whatever it is we're talking about. We're talking about the Spirit of God is saying upgrade. So I'm not going to limit him by looking at the negative past. I'm not going to limit him by looking at even the good past. I'm going to say, Lord, bring the good, bring the new. Bring the new to me right now, and I'll receive it, and I want to thank you for it. Thank you for my upgrade. Amen? Amen. So how do we position ourselves for our upgrade? Number one, we're going to forget the negative past. Forget the positive past. We're going to, we're going to remember not the former things. That's what Isaiah said right there. But also, look at verse 19 again. We're back in Isaiah chapter 43 again, right? Isaiah 43 and verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Number one, we're going to remember not the old, for the former things. But also he says, Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Look at that phrase there. I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? That word know right there is very, very, very important. Shall you not know it? He asks the question. That word know right there means to ascertain by seeing. Hear that? God said, I want to upgrade you. I want to bring in something new and something fresh and something good, something better. I'm going to bring you up. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to bring you forward, suddenly forward and suddenly upward in your ministry or whoever it is in your life, bless God. But he says, shall you not know it? That word know, it means to ascertain it by seeing. In other words, the Spirit of God is saying, I want you to get it. I want you to get a vision of it. I want you to get a picture of it in your heart, in your mind. He's talking about your imagination. Shall you not know it? Shall you not ascertain it by seeing? That's why the Spirit of God is telling them about the new thing he wants to do. He wants to get them a vision. He wants to get them a vision of that new thing. The Lord said, before I can bring it, spring it forth in your life, that upgrade that I want to bring for you, before I can do it, I need you, I need you to get a, a good vision for it. Begin to see it. Begin to see yourself upgraded financially. Begin to see yourself being upgraded in, in the, in your, into your dream, uh, whatever that dream that God's put in your heart. Begin to see it on the inside of you. God said, can you see it? Can you see yourself healed? Can you see your marriage blessed? Can you see your kids serving God and saved? Begin to see it. Can you, shall you not, I'll do a new thing. But God says, can you get a vision for it? Can you imagine it? That's what your imagination is for. Your imagination is not just to, to think about bad things that could happen or think about this. And that. God, God gave you the capacity to imagine, to see things that aren't there on the inside of you, to imagine a picture of what you want to be or what you want to have or what God has promised you in your life. And he said, I need to get your imagination involved in this thing. Shall you not see it? Shall you not uh, uh, know it? Shall you not ascertain it by seeing it? Can you see it in your imagination? Do you have a vision for it? God says, if I can have a if I can get a vision for you it, on the inside of you, I can work to bring. That's what God will use. That's the blueprint that He uses to manifest good things in our lives. Is that that vision that we have on the inside? That's what the Word of God is designed for: is to create a vision, 
of the blessings of God that he wants to bring into our lives. That's why God's given us his word to teach us how to walk, but to show us also what the Lord has, what good things the Lord has for us in Christ Jesus, that he has every intention for us to have and enjoy and, and, to, and to use and to be. We read the word of God, we meditate it, and the spirit of God begins to paint a picture on the inside of you walking and living in victory. You're no longer bound by habits and addictions anymore. I see myself walking free from that behavior, that addiction. I see myself in a blessed relationship. I see myself blessed and flourishing and thriving in the earth and fulfilling my purpose. I can see myself doing that. God says, that's right. can't you see it? Because now you can see it. God says, now I can do it. But until you can see it, God said, I can't do it. The best example of this, I've given it before. Uh, Happy Caldwell, the pastor down there in Little Rock, Arkansas, is an elder pastor. He's resigned, retired now. He's a, still a minister, though. But Happy Caldwell was in a, in a, in a, a certain place looking at beautiful homes, beautiful houses and mansions. And he was driving through that area, and he just said this out of his mouth. He saw these beautiful homes, these beautiful mansions. He said, you know, wow, I can't imagine living in a place like that. And when he said that, he, happy, Pastor Caldwell said, the Spirit of God spoke up on the inside of me and said, don't worry, you won't. You never will. <laughs> you know, don't worry, you never will. He said... I can't imagine living in a house that nice. And the Spirit of God said, don't worry, you never will. And Pastor Caldwell was hurt. He said, Lord, why? Why can't, why can't I live in a place like that? He said, because of what you just said. You said, I can't imagine it. He said, until you can imagine it, I can't bring it to your life. I can't do it for you until you can imagine it. But once, if you can begin to get an image for it, a vision of it, and begin to see it. If you can ascertain it by seeing. That's what that word no means in verse 19. It says, behold, God says, I will do a new thing. I'm going to bring this upgrade to your life. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Can you get a vision of it? Can you see it? See it? Can you see it? Can you see it in your imagination? God says, I'm trying to paint and imagine something on, your imagine, on the canvas of your imagination of your heart. That is something that God is going to do, that only God can do in your life and bless in your life. Bless God. And God says, when I can get you to see it, then I can begin to do it. Amen? And number three, we're talking about positioning ourselves. Number one, we're going to forget the past, negative and positive. Number two, we're going to begin to get a vision for what God is going to do in our lives, in our families, something good. And number three, we're going to talk it. We're going to expect it. We're going to talk about it and expect it. Amen? Shall you not know it and imagine it? And then begin to, that's why, you know, the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 17. My time is about up. You have two minutes. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 17, says the Lord does nothing until he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. The Lord doesn't do anything in the earth unless he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. And you ever wonder why? Lord, why do you reveal things? Why do you, why do you reveal the things you want to do in the earth the things you want to do and manifest in the earth, why do you first reveal them to a, to a prophet? And, and this, the answer is one of the, it's a bigger answer than what I'm about to give, but this is, this is the, the main gist is because the Spirit of God said, it's this, so that the prophet can speak it forth in the earth. The people can begin to see it, expect it, believe it, expect it, lay hold of it. They can begin to talk it. And that, opens the door for the Lord to do it in the earth. Your expectancy, you expecting it. God just doesn't force his will upon, it'd be nice if he did just force his good will upon your life. But God says, when you begin to expect something good to happen for you, when you begin to expect his goodness to manifest, you begin to expect his favor, you begin to talk about his favor and his goodness, the Lord says, then I can do it. Then I can manifest it. That's why I want to first reveal it and talk about it through my prophets so that they can get you online, get your faith and your expectancy online so that it can begin to be talked about and expected and believed. The Lord's saying upgrade. I'm about, I want to do some upgrade. I know that the world right now is going in a negative trajectory. It's going down, 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 down. But God's, at the same time, God says, I want my people to go up, 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 up. 
And I'm going to upgrade them at the same time the world was going down, down, down. And they can ask you, why are you going up, 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 and we're going down, down? You can say, it's because of Jesus. He's the one who's elevating my life. Do you know my Jesus? Amen? That, that can be a, the way we witness to the world. Glory to God. The Lord has every intention, and that's the way he designed it, and he purposed it, just as the devil has produced his worst in this generation in the world through the curse. God is producing his best in the earth through the blessing. At the same time, and they'll, 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 one is going up and one's going down, God, but you're the one going up. God said, I want to upgrade you, but I got to get you to begin to see it, expect it, talk it, remember not the old stuff, the things that, the negative stuff, let it go. I got something good and better for you right now. Upgrade is what the Spirit of God is saying. Your upgrade is due. You are due for an upgrade. You are due for an upgrade. You are eligible, child of God. You've been faithful over little. And the Lord says, now upgrade and be ruler over much. Glory to God. We'll talk more about this later. But listen, one upgrade that you need, the first upgrade that you need in your life, before anything else, is you need to be, a, you need to be born again. If you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you need to ask Jesus Christ into your heart and get saved. And it's as simple as praying a prayer like this. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus because I need a Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I repent of my sins. I just, I, I, just, I receive you as my Savior. I want to live for you. If you pray a prayer like that, we believe you got born again. And what you, we hope you do now is just get into a Bible-believing, teaching church. Let them teach you the Word of God and you can grow, and the Lord can upgrade you in the higher, better things that he has for you. Until next week, the Lord Spirit of God is saying, upgrade, you are due, you are eligible, receive it by faith. But until next week, I am Pastor Chris Turner. This broadcast is called Building on the Rock. Peace out.